Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Serious games specifically designed for educational and training purposes are finding their way into classrooms around the world. So this week we find out exactly what they are and how they can be used. The Grenoble École de Management is a prestigious French business school which has pioneered serious games. We talked to one of their professors, Hélène Michel, who specializes in innovation management to find out her views on the subject. Over the past two and a half years, the Grenoble École de Management has become an international reference point in serious games. Even experts from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have traveled to the French city to take a look at their innovations. But what exactly is a serious game? Hélène Michel has been studying and playing them for the past 10 years. A serious game is one that's been created with a serious purpose in mind. There's an educational or a professional goal. Serious games can be useful when you want to convey a complicated message which is too difficult or too boring, you don't want to spend time on it. In order to develop a serious game from the concept phase right up to the moment it's played, whether it's a serious game in video format or a board game, it takes a year. GEM has 7,000 students from 115 countries studying in nine different campuses in France and abroad. But do management studies need to include serious games? A firm yes is the Dean's answer. Forty percent of the students have already used serious games, and that number will grow. In an average week, the students use serious games for job performance reviews. Two days later, they might use another one for conflict resolution. And at the end of the week, they might use another for dealing with stress. In every game, they need to genuinely be proactive and not pretend. In Grenoble, games for change are created. Games which make people's lives easier. Innovation is their motto. Laure creates serious games. She leads a team of six. Two game designers, two game artists, a game master and herself. They held a brainstorming meeting for a high school game about innovation. She's telling a group of business people about what the team does. Every top 40 firm in France uses at least one serious game. We're focused on innovation and we've realized that there are more companies interested in using serious games in training programs about behavioral attitudes. More than 200 business people have already visited GEM's serious game platform. One of these games is used regularly by experts in micro and nanotechnology. The infrared light card detects temperature changes. The expert creates real devices inspired by serious games. GEM doesn't sell its serious games to businesses, but it does sell the training materials associated with them. Creating a serious game from scratch is a serious affair. According to Hélène Michel, a board game costs around 30,000 euros and between 150,000 and 200,000 euros for a virtual one. Questions about democracy in Thailand have been hitting the headlines recently, but it's always been a complicated subject. In this next report, we explore how one project aims to help students understand governance. Political changes have made people have doubts about what democracy really is. There's an effort to change that. At a school near Bangkok, a board game called Sim Democracy is being launched with the help of a brass band. It ambitiously aims to teach children how to run a government in a democratic society. It'll teach them how to learn to analyze and maintain a democratic state of mind and to learn the benefits of it. Uh, democracy is not just, you know, something that you can learn from the book because it's kind of lifestyle. They have to experience it and then they can understand it. So. Uh, uh, I start to have the idea of simulating a country under the democratic system and let the student learn through experiencing. 
It's the first time that these students are playing Sim Democracy, a complicated board game aimed at teaching students a serious topic. The game has been created by a non-profit organization, Friedrich Naumann. The foundation has teamed up with the Election Commission of Thailand to introduce the Sim Democracy game into educational workshops at over 200 high schools and universities around the country. I learn how to govern a country because I have to pretend to be the government and I learn about justice and equality. I also learn about problem solving. In the game, the board represents a country. It's divided into four sectors, hospitals, schools, forests and police stations. They represent public health, education, environment and security. To start the game, each one of the four teams playing holds a brief election campaign to decide who will be the government. It is a difficult game to start with, but I think um, students get um, most of the democratic principles of, out of the game. And um, the, the wording, the keywords we often receive is like participation, um, contribution to the society, um, active role of citizen, um, monitoring of uh, government performance. After playing the game, students examine their performance by looking at their results. The more they play, the better they understand the game. Sim Democracy has been receiving a lot of interest from educators in the region. It's now adapted for universities in Malaysia and South Asia. In official rankings, Zambia has often scored badly when it comes to literacy. The reasons for this include overcrowded classrooms and a lack of individual attention. But now, a pilot video game developed in Finland is offering a new way to improve results. Let's see how it works. In many of Zambia's schools, classes are often overcrowded, so it can be hard for students to get individual attention. Illiteracy rates in the country are high and pupils with learning disabilities struggle. At Vera Chiluba Primary in Lusaka, these grade one pupils spend 20 minutes of their class time engrossed in letters, syllables and words one-on-one -on -one with a digital teacher. They follow instructions through a headset and get points for correct answers that are accumulated over the school term. You know when you are teaching in a group or they are seated in their learning areas and you are teaching you are in front. It becomes now personal when it comes to uh, graphic games. It is one to one and it really helps the slow learners because they'll come from a single letter to double letters until finally a word. In Zambia, students have generally learned to read and write in English. English has over 1,000 letter sound combinations, while the language spoken here in Lusaka, Chinyanja, has no more than 50 letter sounds. This is the language used in grapho games. This makes it significantly simpler for children to identify letter combinations and their corresponding sounds. I never stop playing the game because the tablet keeps telling me what to do next. Grapho games are just a supplement to conventional teaching methods, but they provide 20 minutes of intensive learning per day. At the University of Zambia in Lusaka, Professor Robert Serple oversees PhD students researching grapho games. You give a child a digital game, where everybody knows this who has got, you know, a computer game for their children, they will play it for hours and you don't need any problem of attention. It's, it's, it's magnetic, it captures their attention. So if we can do that with graph a game, and in the process, painlessly they're learning to read without even realizing that they're learning something, then that's a, a, a nice way of, of getting the, the key ingredient of motivation added to this cognitive feature of the simplicity of the letter song correspondence. When children return home after school and after they've done their chores, many enjoy reading, an exciting activity they can share with older siblings. Graphic games are expected to be used on a trial basis in the eastern province later this year, with smartphones replacing tablets. Taking graphic games into homes means everyone's literacy improves. That's all we have time for this week. But before we go, remember that we always look forward to your feedback on our social media pages. So do drop us a line about serious games. Goodbye for now. 
Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.